Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to look at a mid-sagittal cut of the human brain, both a real picture like this of the brain and a model. And the reason we start with the mid-sagittal cut here is because, generally speaking, we can see a lot more of the important structures with the mid-sagittal cut. Most of the questions on most lab exams will come from this cut. All right. Now, remember what the mid-sagittal cut is. We're taking the brain, in this case a human brain, and we're literally cutting it into equal left and right halves. This view that we're looking at is of the right hemisphere of the brain. So when we talk about the left and right halves, we generally call them hemispheres. So this is the right hemisphere of the brain. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk about how we identify which is the front part of the brain and the back, that is anterior and posterior. And to do that, let's talk about two large structures. So the entire region of the brain, really the superior part of it, where you see all these ridges and folds, remember that ridges are called gyri, and the folds, at least the small ones, like this one right here in my mouse is, these are called sulci, or singular sulcus. And so this entire thing with all these gyri and sulci on the top of the brain, where I'm tracing my mouse, this is called the cerebrum. Okay? We're going to come back to the cerebrum in a lot more detail in a separate video and talk about the different parts of it. The other part of it, which is considered the small brain, is this thing in the back here that lies directly under the posterior part of the brain. And this thing right here is the cerebellum, or we could say the right half of the cerebellum. Identifying the cerebellum is one of the most important things to be able to do, not only because you'll probably be asked to identify the cerebellum, but also because it's a good clue as to which side of the brain you're looking at, anterior or posterior. The cerebellum in general, which is all of this, is on the posterior side of the brain. We could also say it's inferior, but in general, it's posterior, okay? So bottom line, if you see the cerebellum, you know you're looking at the posterior side of the brain. Here's another look at these. Again, this part with all these gyri and sulci. Again, this is the cerebrum. And then right here in this kind of lightish red color, we see the cerebellum. And this whole thing is the cerebellum, although there are sub parts to it, all right? We're gonna come back to the cerebellum at the end of this video. All right, so now let's go back and look at some other parts of the brain. So this part right here that I'm tracing with my mouse, this part right here that looks lighter in color, and you can see that it kind of surrounds this little hole right here, this lighter part is called the corpus callosum. And the corpus callosum is actually a bunch of bundles of axons that connect the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Okay, so this is the corpus callosum, and this hole that it surrounds right here is called the lateral ventricle. Okay? Now, there is a lateral ventricle on both sides of the brain. So there's a right lateral ventricle, which is this one shown here. If we were looking at the other hemisphere, we would have the left lateral ventricle. So always remember that there's two lateral ventricles, so that one does have a left and a right. And as I mentioned, the corpus callosum is what surrounds that. We take a look at this view. Again, this very light colored region, this is the corpus callosum. And this hole that's right here is called the lateral ventricle. And this hole right here again is the right lateral ventricle. Okay. Now it does say here that it is septum pellucidum. Really the septum pellucidum is not normally what we talk about. This is actually a very thin membrane that separates the two lateral ventricles. But in a lab, generally speaking, if it's pointing to this region, you're going to call it the right lateral ventricle. All right. Next, we're going to talk about the diencephalon, which is, as we talked about in a previous video, composed of the thalamus, hypothalamus, and the epithalamus, which is really just the pineal gland. And the first task is to find the thalamus. The thalamus is right here, this whole region right here. One key that you found the thalamus is if you look right here, it may be a little hard to see in this picture, but there's a little bump right here in kind of the corner of the thalamus. This bump is called technically the intermediate mass of the thalamus, but if you see this bump, you're in the right place because really all of this is the thalamus. Okay, okay. If we then go anterior and a little bit down, so just kind of right here, this region right here is the hypothalamus. 
Okay. Now, we won't be able to see it in this picture right here, but normally dangling directly underneath the hypothalamus, we would have the pituitary gland. Generally, when you're looking at a real cadaver brain, a lot of times the pituitary gland kind of falls off in the process of preparing it, so you won't ordinarily see a pituitary gland here, but it would normally lie right underneath the hypothalamus. And directly posterior to the pituitary gland, we have this little bump right here, which is called the mammillary body. Also, directly anterior to the pituitary gland, we have the optic chiasma, which is where the optic nerves cross over. Okay? So directly underneath the hypothalamus, from anterior to posterior, we have the optic chiasma, the pituitary gland not shown here, and the mammillary body. Now, instead of going anterior from the thalamus, if we actually go posterior to it, we have this little bump right here, which is called the pineal gland. Okay? The pineal gland, again, directly posterior to the thalamus, but you, as you'll see later, it's actually directly superior to these two bumps right here, which we're going to see in a few minutes are called the corpora quadrigemina. Right? But this is the pineal gland or the epithalamus, and the pineal gland is an endocrine gland that releases melatonin to help you sleep. Let's take a look at this view right here. So this in purple right here, again, directly under the corpus callosum and the fornix, we have the thalamus. And this little bump right here, which you see in purple, is the interthalamic adhesion, or as I said before, the intermediate mass of the thalamus. That generally won't be asked in an anatomy course, but if you see that bump, you're in the right place where the thalamus is, okay? Remember, if we go anterior to the thalamus and down, this blue region right here is the hypothalamus. Okay? And directly underneath the hypothalamus, we have the pituitary gland shown here in red. And again, underneath the hypothalamus from anterior to posterior, we have the optic chiasma, the pituitary gland, and then right here we have, in kind of this lighter blue color, the mammillary body. Again, then going posterior to the thalamus right here, we have the pineal gland, okay, which is a part of the epithalamus. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And remember that those three structures, hypothalamus, thalamus, and epithalamus, all comprise the diencephalon. All right, now we're gonna switch gears and move toward the brainstem. So the brainstem is composed of three general structures. First of all, we have the midbrain, which is really in this area right here, directly underneath the thalamus. And then inferior to the midbrain, we have the pons, which is this bulge right here. And then inferior to that, we have the medulla oblongata, which as we go inferior, it turns into the spinal cord. It is continuous with the spinal cord. So first, let's talk about the midbrain. So the midbrain as a general region is directly inferior to the thalamus, okay? Now, the midbrain has two major parts. You can either look at the anterior part of it or the posterior part. We're gonna look at the anterior part here. Um, it's not labeled here, but the anterior surface of the midbrain has what we call cerebral peduncles. And then if we look on the posterior aspect of the midbrain, we have the corpora quadrigemina. Now you see here only two bumps. You have a superior bump and an inferior bump. But remember, this is the right hemisphere of the brain, so there's a left two that we have. So there's four total, two superior and two inferior. And collectively, they are the corpora quadrigemina. Now corpora means bodies. Quad means four, and gemina means twins. So collectively, quadrigemina means quadruplets. And so corpora quadrigemina means quadruplet bodies. So there's four bumps, all right? And you'll see these on the posterior aspect of the midbrain. Now, one other thing I do want to mention, just in case this comes up, the corpora quadrigemina actually is divided into two separate parts. The top ones, or the superior ones, are called the superior colliculi, okay? Superior colliculi, whereas the bottom two on their respective sides are inferior colliculi. So I just want to throw those terms out there just in case they come up. If we go inferior to the midbrain, we then have the pons. The best way to recognize a human pons is it's pretty much this giant bulge that sticks out anteriorly from the brainstem. That region where you have that bulge is the pons. Also in a human brain, the pons is directly anterior to the cerebellum. 
okay? At least the fourth ventricle of the cerebellum, which we'll come back to in a couple minutes, okay? But here's the pons. And then going directly inferior to the pons, we have the medulla oblongata, which is this thinner part beneath the pons. And if you were to continue down from the medulla oblongata, it becomes continuous with the spinal cord. Let's go back and take a look at this slide right here. Okay, so in this region right here, in this green, we have the midbrain. Uh, this part right up here on the anterior side of the midbrain would be where the cerebral peduncles are. On the posterior side, you see these two bumps. These are the corpora quadrigemina, at least the right half of them. Okay, also notice that the corpora quadrigemina are pretty much just inferior to the pineal gland. So there's only one pineal gland, but if you find the pineal gland, the corpora quadrigemina are just inferior to that, okay? Here's the bulge right here, this is the pons, and then if we go inferior to that, we have the medulla oblongata, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, I wanna take a look at the ventricles, right? Ventricles are spaces within the brain. They're just spaces, and they contain a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid, normally abbreviated as CSF. So I already mentioned the lateral ventricles, okay? Remember that the lateral ventricles, both left and right, are spaces kind of surrounded by the corpus callosum, okay? So this is the right lateral ventricle, but there's also a left. We then have what's called the third ventricle, and the third ventricle is basically uh, a space that encloses the thalamus, okay? So the third ventricle, we can see it basically right here, but just basically know that it runs around the thalamus. Okay, and then if we go down further, we have the fourth ventricle, which as I mentioned was posterior to the pons, but anterior to the cerebellum, right in between those two structures. Another thing that I wanted to mention that's not as visible in the actual real brain is what's called the cerebral aqueduct, which is right here. The cerebral aqueduct is a thin space right here that actually connects the third ventricle where the thalamus is to the fourth ventricle. Okay, so this right here in my mouse is, that is the cerebral aqueduct, all right? Also know that there is something called an interventricular foramen, which is really on the anterior side of where the thalamus is. And this is a small canal that actually connects the right lateral ventricle to the left lateral ventricle. The last thing I want to discuss is the cerebellum. If we look at the cerebellum, it looks kind of like the cerebrum. We have these ridges on the superficial parts of it, but what I want you to notice is that that's where the gray matter is. The white matter, which you can see much lighter in the center or the deep parts of the cerebellum, is called the arbor vitae, which means tree of life. And as you can see, this white matter kind of looks like branches of a tree. We can see this a little bit better in this image right here. Again, the superficial regions of the cerebellum is really just gray matter, okay? And that's what we can see here that looks kind of like the cerebrum itself. And then deep to that, we have the arbor vitae, which just looks like white branches of a tree. So this concludes our anatomy study of the brain from a mid-sagittal cut. In the next video, we'll look at some of the other cuts of the brain. We won't be able to see as much that's at least new, but we'll point out the major structures in that video. So hopefully this made sense and you learned a lot. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.